This is video number 23 of a series about complex arithmetic. We, recently we've been focusing on powers and roots of complex numbers and on using Mathematica to visualize things in kind of neat ways. We'll continue with that in this video. In the last video we looked at finding first of all the 12th roots of unity, the 12th roots of 1, and we saw that there were 12 of them right here that we could write in polar form. You could use Euler's formula to convert those also to rectangular form. Then we used list plot as well as table and graphics within a show to visualize those 12th roots and we saw that they were all equally spaced around the unit circle. The angle between them is 30 degrees because it's 360 divided by 12. And I mentioned that if you connect the successive points here, the red dots, with straight line segments you would get a regular polygon with 12 sides. That's called a dodecagon. I want to start this video by emphasizing that in another way by using Mathematica to see that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this table command that I used to make the blue lines and I'm going to use it, I'm going to copy and paste it, put a comma here, paste it here, and make some modifications to it to make uh, lines between the red dots. And just for some variety, let's make those lines dashed and magenta in color. And the thing I need to do is I need to take away the zero, zero. I don't want these to start at the origin. I want them to start at each given point and move to the next point, so I'm going to copy and paste this thing, put a comma here, change the ends to n plus ones, so this will create lines between the successive points, and we can see the dodecagon right there. What I want to do now is I want to um, generalize this. I want to discuss, first of all, what it means to raise an arbitrary complex number, well, to find the nth roots where n is a positive integer of an arbitrary complex number written in polar form as z e to the i theta. What would it mean for a complex number zeta to be the nth root of that number z, where n again is a positive integer? Well, for one thing, you want zeta to the n to be equal to z. What if zeta is in polar coordinates itself? Say its modulus is rho and its argument is phi. That would mean when we raise zeta to the n, we would get rho to the n. We'd have to raise its modulus to the n power. And we would multiply its argument by n. And we would want that to equal this thing right here. But remember, there are different polar representations of every complex number. We could take this theta and we could add 2 pi to it, for example, and we'd be getting the same complex number. We could add 4 pi instead. We could add 6 pi etc. We could also do negative 2 pi, negative 4 pi, etc. And <clears throat> while rho is, is going to be uniquely determined by r, phi will not be uniquely determined because of this ambiguity. What's going to happen? Well, first of all, with the rho, so I'll just get rid of everything here. With the rho, it's going to be a non-negative real number. It's going to be the unique non-negative real number that is the nth root of r, r also being a non-negative real number. And here's where we use a radical notation exclusively. When you see this in complex analysis, r should be a non-negative real number. And so you're talking about the non-negative real root, root of r, real nth root, where n again is a positive integer. So this is unique. This is not an arbitrary complex number. It's not r to the 1 over n. It's not the, the set of nth roots. That'll be unique. And what about phi? Well, one thing phi could be is chosen so that n times phi is equal to theta. So theta over n works. But also, n times phi could be theta plus 2 pi. So, theta plus 2 pi. 
also works over n. Theta plus 4 pi over n works. Theta plus 6 pi over n works, etc. Will we always get unique answers here? No. Eventually, we're going to cycle back. The last unique one will be theta plus n minus 1 pi over n, or times 2 pi, excuse me. Theta plus n minus 1 times 2 pi over n, because if we got to n here, then in the second part of this fraction, we'd have n times 2 pi over n, which would just be 2 pi, and we'd be adding 2 pi to the original angle theta over n. Now, instead of doing an example in this video, I'll maybe save that for the next video, I'd like to take the time to generalize this code that created this picture to make it an animation, first of all, so embedded in a manipulate, where we are using locator to cause the animation to happen in ways that I've shown you before. So by doing this, we're going to see an animation window and we'll see a cursor that can be moved. But I haven't changed other things, so that cursor is not going to affect anything. How should I change other things? Well, I want to change these angles here. And let's write it with a fraction here. Put an I on the front. I want to create these numerators that you see up here as the n here varies from 0 to 11. Now, I probably should have used a different letter here. Maybe I should have used an m up here instead of an n. The n down here, I'm going to want to be 12, while the n here within the, the table is the table's um, iterator. So they're, they're different things here, but hopefully that doesn't cause too much confusion. What about theta? I could use the principal value of the argument of the complex number as my value of theta. R gun Mathematica will calculate the principal value of the argument of this complex number. That can be my theta. And then again, I'm adding multiples of 2 pi. And then dividing by the n up here, which was 12. The n here again is just the iterator for the table. So they are different things. Need to change that. Need to change it here too. And I also need to make sure the modulus is correct, so let me do that with the absolute value function raised to the 12th power. The absolute value of my complex number. Oops, trouble typing here. This should, maybe you want to pause it and think about that, this should uh, cause the red dots to move. Let's see if that happens. I, I think I might want to make my um, plot range fixed as well. As I move the cursor, those red dots should move, and they are. I also want to make the blue lines move and also the magenta lines move. So let's copy and paste all this appropriately. For example, right here. That right here, and then right here, though I will then have to also change the ends to n plus ones and on that one. Change these ends to n plus one. Here we go. Here's our animation. There it is. Oops, I'm realizing there was a mistake. I knew that something was wrong. Uh, actually, these I'm not raising to the 12th power, I'm raising to the 1 12th power. Glad I caught that. I knew something looked wrong. This is going to be better. Yeah, they won't move so fast now. When the complex number is further away from the origin than 1, when its modulus is greater than 1, these roots are going to have a modulus smaller. When the modulus is less than 1, the, the roots are going to have a modulus that's bigger. When the modulus exact, is exactly 1, the modulus of the roots will be the same. 
and they do rotate in such a way, look at this, that they always make a regular dodecagon. The twelfth roots of any complex number other than zero are going to make a regular dodecagon, and you can say similar kinds of things for other kinds of roots. For example, sixth roots are always going to make a regular hexagon, etc. Pretty cool, very neat thing about complex numbers.